Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are once again doing staff tool strategies. Uh, we're going to start looking at staff styles. I'm going to give you some basics about that, including a little bit of theory about what a staff style is. So in the last several videos, I gave you a lot of information about the staff attributes, which uh, essentially means uh, any given staff has these behaviors, these appearances, these independent elements, and are displaying these items, right? And you can change these differently for every single staff. Well, a staff style allows you to change one or multiple of these options uh, independently and differently on a measure-by-measure -measure basis. And it's sort of like a temporary override to the staff attributes for wherever you happen to apply it. So I'm just going to do something real quick. I'm going to go into the uh, staff style dialog box here just to show you what this window looks like. Now I'm going to talk a lot more about this in the next video when I talk about creating staff styles. As it is, Finale comes with 21 sort of preset staff styles for you. So uh, you know a lot of these things are, are pretty common that you're going to need to use uh, are already existing. Uh, but in the next video, I'm going to show you how to um, create your own. Now, the idea here is that the staff style dialog box has all of the behaviors, the independent elements, some of the appearances, and all of the items to display uh, that you can uh, define in a certain way. And a lot of these uh, boxes here have little dashes or minus check marks. Um, that literally just means that whatever you're doing for this particular element, no change is going to be made um, against the staff attributes. With certain things checked, in this case with the rhythmic notation, you see alternate notation has a real check mark, which means we're definitely making a change to the alternate notation. And then in the settings, you can see that it's set to rhythmic notation. So this rhythmic notation staff style is literally just overriding this aspect of the staff attributes for this measure in this staff, if that makes sense. And interestingly, there's some other options here, uh, including things for you know full staff name and abbreviated staff name, the position of these. So we can um, uh, you know create different staff names as staff styles too, which is interesting, and even different transpositions. Now these particular items do not exist in the staff attributes. In fact, they're part of the score manager in the bottom section here. Uh, there's the full name and the transposition and stuff. Now, this is sort of interesting because in older versions of Finale, these options sort of existed in the staff attributes anyway, and they kind of retained those overrides in the staff styles uh, because, uh, you know, sometimes it's important to have a different staff name uh, for various reasons. So let's talk about how to use these staff styles, how to apply these staff styles. There's several ways to do it, and I'll, I'll go through a few of them here. Uh, the first thing is that you need to make a selection of music. So it can be just a single bar, it can be two bars, um, four bars in this case. And uh, the what you can do is go into the staff menu, and in this middle section, this is all having to do with staff styles. We're going to choose the second option here, Apply Staff Style to, And we get two sub-options here for the score and parts, or the current part, uh, slash score. So it is what it is. If you select score and parts, you're selecting a staff style for both the score and parts for the for these measures for on this staff. And you'll pull up this uh, menu here, which will give you all of the available staff styles to choose from. So all you have to do is just pick one of them. We can do slash notation here, and it will change that uh, notation to slash notation. Now again, this is uh, you know as with the alternate notation video that I talked about uh, previously these alternate notations are sort of a skin that goes over top of the measures. So even though it looks like all of the notes went away, they're actually still there underneath the, the surface. Uh, and you can see that uh, if you access the, um, the, the frames with the uh, speedy entry, you can see that the notes are actually still there. This is important because slash notation, uh, rhythmic notation, doesn't actually have any um, inherent playback effect. So whatever data exists underneath these slashes is what's going to get played back. So that's uh, sort of important to realize. Now, as I mentioned, there was two options there to applying this, um, including uh, score and parts and current parts, uh, part current part score. And I chose the score and parts. So as you would expect, that uh, slash notation will appear in the piano part as well. Um, let me just delete this. Actually, undo, undo, undo. There we go. Um, we can apply to a single score part, and it depends on which part or score you're viewing. So currently I'm viewing the score. So if I go in here and apply staff style to current part or score, slash notation, it will put it on the score, but not in the part. All right. And you can do it the other way too, by the way. Actually, let's just get rid of this. 
and you can go into the part and apply to current part score slash notation and now you have the slash notation in the part but not in the score now it just so happens that i have this piano part in actually two linked parts i have it in the piano part here but i also have it in the piano vocal part here and because i applied that staff style specifically to the piano part uh, it's not also it's also not applying to the uh, piano vocal part here right um, and actually what we can do is, I this is interesting, we can apply m different staff styles to different parts or scores. So now that I'm in the piano vocal linked part, I can actually go in here, apply staff style to current part score, and I can choose something else like rhythmic notation. And for the piano vocal uh, linked part here, I will get rhythmic notation, but for the piano part, I will get uh, slash notation, and I haven't done anything in the score, so the score will still have notes. So it's entirely possible to set these up uh, differently, uh, you know, in different parts and, and scores and stuff like that. So that's uh, really nifty. Now, if you have a uh, staff style applied to either just the score or just the part or something, there is a way to sort of filter these staff styles out to the other parts and scores. In fact, if you select the measures under where that staff style is and go into the staff menu here, there's an option for use selected staff style for score and parts. Now, because I'm selecting it in this particular piano part that's using the slash notation, when I choose this option, now it's going to filter out this slash notation into the other parts, first of all, there's the piano vocal part, but also into the score, all right? And then this could be done either way. If I had put the staff style initially in the score, I could then filter it out to the other parts by using that option called use selected staff style for score and parts. That's just a way to kind of um, filter that, uh, that, that staff style out to other parts if you need to. Now, there are a couple other ways to actually apply the staff style, so let me show you this. Uh, the first is with meta tools. Now, the way the meta tools work is you just make a selection and press either a letter or a number. And I happen to know that S is the slash notation. So if I just press S, I'm going to get slash notation there. Now, you may be asking, how do you know what those uh, meta tools are? There's sort of a cheating way of figuring this out. Just go to apply staff style two. Doesn't matter which one you choose here. Just to view this list, you'll see uh, in the parentheses at the end of the name of each staff style a letter or a number so uh, these are the meta tools that these are the letters that you can use on your keyboard to uh, engage the staff styles c slash notation is s rhythmic notation is r we have a few for blank notation uh, let's see another one, a couple more that you might really want to memorize is the one bar and two bar repeat uh, staff styles which is o and t not the number one and two believe it or not um, this is just how Finale sets it up out of the box. So, you know, S, R, O, and T, uh, you know, in my opinion, are probably the, the most important ones to uh, memorize off the bat. So, again, with the staff tool, just select the measures S or R or, oops, we can do O. Oh, there we go. Or we can do T. I'm going to get to that little window in a second. All right, so lots of different um, options to use the meta tools. And the meta tools, by the way, will work as if you're choosing apply staff style to score and parts. So it is going to apply it to both score and parts. So if you need to, you know, filter out just, you know, the part, for example, you, you won't be able to use a meta tool in that way. Now, the other way to uh, apply staff styles rather quickly, if, if you don't happen to have those meta tools memorized, is just select the measures and right-click anywhere in those selected measures to pull up a contextual menu. Now, these first four options happen to be the first four options in the staff menu in that section on staff styles. Again, I'll talk about defining staff styles in the next video, but you can see you can access those apply staff style to options from the contextual menu as well. Uh, and also the use selected staff style for scoring parts. And I'll talk about the clear staff style in a second. But you can also directly access the staff styles in this long list here. So you don't even have to have those uh, meta tools memorized. Just, you know, select the measures, right click and choose the one that you want slash notation here. All right. So that's how you would do that. 
And so now that I have a uh, staff style here, uh, how would you get rid of them? Well, you may have guessed. We just go to the staff tool or the staff menu here and choose clear staff styles from. And again, we have a, a few different options to parse out how we're going to clear them from or where we're going to clear them from rather. We can clear the staff styles from the score and parts, only the score or only the parts only, right? So just choose one of these, let's say score and parts that will get rid of it everywhere. Uh, and again, that option exists in the contextual menu, so you don't even have to go into the staff menu there. Just right click and choose one of these options, clear staff style from score and parts. And the other way that we can actually delete staff styles, you, you may have noticed that when you create a staff style, you get this little gray bar that runs across. That's It's important to because it tells you that there is a staff style applied here, which is uh, you know ultimately very important. But you can literally just click on that and it will turn purple. And then just press the delete key and the staff style goes away. So that's another uh, quick way to delete the staff style. Uh, speaking of those gray bars, there's a couple options in the staff menu here in the bottom section, have, uh, or the bottom part of the middle section here for show staff styles and show staff style names. Now by default, show staff styles will be checked. And when that's checked, I'm unchecking it now, you can see that the gray bar goes away. So checking that option is what's allowing you to see that staff style bar. Incidentally, you will only ever see that bar if you're in the staff tool. So if I were to switch to another tool, you'll see it go away. So it's not gonna be annoyingly in the way forever and ever in your file. It's only when you choose the staff style or the staff tool, then those staff styles become um, visible. But we also have the option to show staff style names. If we check that, that little gray bar gets a little bit bigger and it will actually show you which um, staff style it is that's applied there. And we could do a different one here. If I do rhythmic notation, you'll see that the uh, staff style name now says rhythmic notation. So this is can be handy if you're a little bit confused about which staff style you have selected on a particular measure. Sometimes it's not quite as obvious as what I have here. Obviously, I know that's slash and I know that that's rhythmic notation, but uh, that's an option as well. And you know, it's easy enough to just go in here and toggle that on and forth. If you get uh, confused for half a second, you can do that. So I talked about the contextual menu. You have all these options here for applying, clearing, and using selected staff styles. Then you can directly choose a staff style. And I'll talk about defining staff styles in the next uh, video. But directly from the uh, selection tool, we can access part of the staff styles uh, contextual menu. It's, it's a, sort of towards the bottom here. It says staff styles. We really only have options for the first four things. It's not going to give you that full list of all of the staff styles that are uh, available to you. Um, but at least you can choose, you know, apply staff style and then choose uh, one of these options. And again, it's not giving you the sub options for applying to score uh, and parts or score or part, whatever. Um, so this will actually apply to everything uh, if you do this from the, um, the selection tool. Now, a couple extra uh, bonus tips to realize with these staff styles is that they do not have to be applied to whole measures. You can apply staff styles to partial measures. And uh, the easiest way for me to select a partial measure is just to click, hold, and drag um, to get a little lasso selection here. And you can choose up to like, you know, the first two and a half bars here. And then I can apply, let's say I'm gonna apply a rhythmic notation to that. And then I'm just gonna leave the second half of bar three alone so that we see those three eighth notes. And then I can choose that fourth measure and I can even do a different staff style here uh, for slash notation. So you can get uh, very mixed and matched with these slash notations as much as you need to. Um, you know, you could do, uh, you know, if you wanted to do a one bar repeat there and then a two bar repeat there or something, you could do, you know, something, uh, something like that. Uh, speaking of these one and two bar repeats, it's important to realize that Finale will not interpret these one and two bar repeats for playback. Uh, you know, it's just it doesn't recognize these as saying, OK, I want you to replay bar one four times. Um, you do have to actually have data underneath these uh, staff styles in order for it to play back. So when you do something like this, it's actually kind of better, particularly if you're, you know, if you're concerned with playback to copy and paste the uh, measures into uh, the following measures, although I guess you don't need the mezzo piano there, and then apply the staff style. So then you can go into uh, press O for one bar repeat. And now this will play back properly because the data exists underneath these one bar repeats. Same thing applies to the two bar repeats. And actually for the slashes as well, as I mentioned, um, you know, if you have slash notation here, if there's nothing here, there's nothing will play back because it is po entirely possible to put slash notation 
on empty measures, as you can see. Uh, you'll get your slash notation on the percussion here, but it, there's literally nothing for the percussion to play underneath it, so nothing will sound. Let's just talk uh, a little quickly about some of the other um, uh, staff styles that are available. We talked about the slash and rhythmic notation ones, but there are things for like blank notation, uh, which again will just you know give you a blank measure there. Uh, uh, there's, this is set up differently for different layers. I talk a little bit about the blank notation, all of the alternate notations actually, in one of the previous videos, so you can check that out. A little bit of a further discussion there about uh, the differences between applying these to layers, uh, blank notation, all layers. Um, there's a normal notation uh, staff style, so if you happen to have a staff that's normally set to be slashes the entire way through, you could actually override that temporarily by choosing normal notation, so it's sort of doing this uh, backwards a little bit. Again, one and two bar repeats. Uh, standard five line staff, in case your normal staff has one uh, staff line. Uh, one line staff will give you <laughs> just that. It will give you a one line staff. Um, we can do uh, the one line staff with the short bar line. Uh, we could do force hide staff cutaway, and that will actually just make that whole uh, bar appear to disappear. Uh, what else is there? Force hide. This is uh, somewhat similar, but has a little bit of a different implication depending on if you choose, I think if you choose the whole uh, system there, yep, you'll see that the, it gets collapsed as well. Uh, so there's options for that. We can do, uh, there's note shapes, uh, stemless notes. We'll actually just put the, <laughs> get the stems out of there. Um, lots of different things to do here. Uh, lyrics and chords only will uh, eliminate everything except the lyrics and chords. X note heads will turn everything into X note heads. Uh, these are very well labeled. <laughs> blank notation with rests layer one, which would be different than that blank notation, uh, the, the, the normal blank notation where you wouldn't get the rests there. Uh, and that can be applied to layer one or four. Um, there's alpha notes and alpha notes uh, solfege. So I, I think I talked about that in one of the previous videos. Uh, you, the finale has these setups as staff styles as well. So you can you know do something like that and get your alpha note heads in there. So now you can see the G there. Um, the other interesting thing is that you can mix and match uh, staff styles or, or multi have multiple staff styles uh, on the same uh, measures if they don't conflict. So for example, in this percussion line, I could choose uh, one line staff, but I could also apply a slash notation. And I can have both of them because those staff um, uh, styles do not uh, conflict, right? Now, what I mean by conflicting is if I go into the staff um, style dialog box here, if one staff style is set up with an alternate notation checked here, and in this case rhythmic notation, uh, and the alternate notation is set to rhythmic notation, but another staff style like slash notation is also using an alternate notation uh, for slash notation. Now these are singular. You can't have both slash notation and rhythmic notation on the same staff. So if I were to try and put the slash notation and the rhythmic notation on the same bar, it's gonna tell me that I can't do that. So I can apply the slash notation here, and then I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna press R for rhythmic notation, and it's gonna tell me that these staff styles conflict and you have a choice, you can either cancel it, or if you continue, it will replace the staff style that's here with the new staff style that you chose. Um, so again, you just can't have conflicting staff styles. And it's possible to have conflicting staff styles other than alternate notation. Uh, if a particular staff style happens to have one of these options checked and another has it unchecked, then Finale will consider those um, conflicting and it will not allow both of those staff styles uh, to appear in the same measure, if that makes sense. But otherwise, you can um, layer uh, staff styles uh, as much as you need to or as much as you want to. All right, so that is staff styles in a nutshell. Actually, it seems to be a long nutshell. I can see the time on this video getting longer, but there you go. Um, the next video, again, I'm gonna talk about customizing these staff styles and uh, show you how uh, you can uh, create your own and uh, for unique purposes and stuff like that. So come back for that, that will be exciting. All right, so thanks again for watching. My name is Jason. Don't forget to subscribe, and, you know, I'll see you soon on the next video.